What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Dr. Bundi or the Wellness Doctor. I'm here to make another video on mental health and today I'll be focusing mostly on um, social media and its effect on mental health. Please, uh, so be sure to like, share and subscribe and to hit that notification bell so that you can get alerted whenever um, I make a video. For those of you who are new, you can please go back and watch the first and the second video that I've made so that you kind of understand who I am, why, I here, uh, why I'm here, um, what's my story and um, yeah, so you can like catch up with the rest. So yesterday I went for a really interesting event. Um, I was invited by the Association of Pro uh, Professional Advertisers. They were having a creative week and yesterday was the mental health day. And so they kind of had a panel discussion on social media and its effect on mental health. And that's why I'm here to just make a video because I feel like um, what we discussed was so important and I wanted to bring it back to you guys and, you know, feed you with the good stuff. So today what I'll be focusing on, um, number one, it'll be about the stresses that social media has. And then the second half of the video will focus on coping strategies and yeah so before i even go on yesterday i posted on my insta stories and i asked whether any of you have suffered mentally or emotionally due to social media like have you ever had any situation um that affected you mentally or emotionally and like your responses are crazy i'll just try and read some of them so first of all most of you are talking about facebook memories and how they just uh, they're so annoying and i really related to that because some of those memories are such a reminder of you know maybe how ratchet you are or how young you are how foolish you are and stuff like that but um other, you know some of you also went really deep and one one person said yes i discovered that um it made me feel inadequate sometimes that I wasn't achieving as much as my peers. Somebody said, someone once posted a video of a Kenyan lady being molested by whites and I suffered mentally. I mean, that was like one of the saddest ones that I read. Somebody else said, um, at times when I see things I'm praying for but I've not yet received. So I'll get into that as we go along. One more person said, yes, feelings of inadequacy when I see my peers moving ahead in life, school, business, husbands, children, friends. I feel you on that one. Um, Facebook memories, Facebook memories. And one person actually said, nah. So I guess it's, you know, it doesn't cut across the board. Some people are stronger than others. But um, if you're one of those people who have suffered mentally or emotionally, this video is definitely for you. So the first kind of stressor that I wanted to focus on when it comes to social media is um, social media as a mood destabilizer. It, those are just words I'm pointing. They're not like um, official terms. But what I mean is social media has a way of like interfering with your mood. Um, you know, you could be having a really good day. Then you see something on social media and it just completely throws you off. And actually there's a study that's been done that's been linked, um, that's linked social media with a higher rate of depression and anxiety. And so it's a real thing, you know? So that's one way in which social media can be um, a stressor. And the reason that social media is a mood destabilizer, if I can even call it that, is that social media causes an increase of dopamine levels. And you know, dopamine is the chemical in your brain that's responsible for euphoria and addictive behavior. So it behaves in the same way that a drug or, you know, a substance, you know, does. And the thing is, in one controlled study, so they took a group of people and um, they, you know, they were told not to use Facebook. It was a controlled study, so they were told not to use Facebook for Facebook for a period of time. And at the end of the day, they reported higher levels of well-being. So you can see, like, it's an actual real problem. Um, it's a real problem that has been researched and and yeah so that's one way in which social media can be a stressor the second way in which social media can be a stressor is the commonest one that we all know and that's harassment so it could be harassment in any way um it could be bullying you know the trolls and stuff it could be homophobia victim shaming um 
there's so many like and leave alone even the big ones where somebody's maybe picture goes viral even like small little things like you can put a picture or even for content creators you put a video and then guys are just hating and yet like when you are putting that video you are so enthusiastic about it you are feeling good and then like you know people are just coming at you with comments i've been doing this for only like a little over a month and i've already gotten people like having negative comments and trolling trolling me and stuff so that's another way it can work in fact um research has shown that 40 percent of people have been harassed on social media and a little over 70 percent a little over 70 percent have witnessed it so it's a real thing that's been happening and it's another way that can really just um stress us out the third uh, way in which social media stresses uh, people out is through something that's called the highlight reel. Highlight reel. So the highlight reel is whereby people on social media tend to post only the good stuff. You post when you're on holiday, um, even on LinkedIn guys post their promotion, nobody ever really posts the real stuff. Yeah, nobody, well authenticity is very relative on social media and the way in which this can be harmful, we tend to compare people's highlights with our behind the scenes. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. So you, you're having a regular day, you're going to work, you're not wearing any makeup, you are probably having stress at your workplace. And then you go on social media and you see somebody has gotten a raise, somebody has gotten a new job, another person is getting engaged, another person is in holidaying in Greece. And so you tend to compare that with your background scenes, behind the scenes. And the thing we fail to realize is that um, you, you're just looking at people's highlights. But you know, you need to remember that these people have also are behind the scenes. They also have a day when they're not wearing makeup. They also have a day when they're not traveling. And your day of traveling will come. Your day of getting your promotion will come. The other way in which social media can affect us is the fact that we've been using social media as a kind of currency, yeah? So social media carries with it a social currency. So the higher, uh, so the more popular you are in social media the more likes you get the more comments and stuff like that it kind of like nowadays has become a currency that you can cash on you know it means you're more popular you're more liked and that can really affect your self-worth especially if you're not really generating the same likes you not get like you put a picture and you're getting maybe three likes um and this is for people who really you've struggled with self-esteem issues self-actualization self-worth or it might not even be that deep maybe you've even just started a business and then you're like posting and trying to promote your business and then you see like you know you put something on and it's like just three people liking three people commenting it can really affect um how you move in your in terms of your business so this thing of having social media as a social currency is really dangerous especially if you don't already know your worth you don't already know your value you can start pimping yourself engaging yourself and judging yourself based on what other people think about you so the last thing the last stressor uh, when it comes to social media is commonly known as FOMO. So that's the fear of missing out. So you go on social media and you see everybody is doing this or everybody is going to a certain event and then you know it, it can actually drive your behavior. Like you could be on a Friday night, you could have decided, you know what, I've had a long week, I just need to chill, I just need to relax, recuperate. And then you just see everybody is posting there somewhere. That, do you know that thing, that FOMO can actually make you go change, get into your car and go where people are like let's not lie to each other everybody i think almost everybody has been a victim of fomo i personally have and um the reason why fomo can affect your mental health and all of our mental health is because it drives envy like behavior and jealousy and negative competition um it's kind of like we all you know you want to be like so and so you want to do what so and so is doing you want to be a part of the in crowd and you can really drive that envy envy behavior um one study um followed up a bunch of people and they were told to just be on facebook but passively so they just no commenting no liking if there's an event they cannot go for it you know and what that study found was that these people reported being envious of everybody else every single one of them reported that they were envious so that's how it fomo can be really really harmful um, so now what I would advise you guys is not to get rid of your social media because the truth is social media is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Um, I personally love it. I wouldn't lie to you guys. And so for me, I'm just here to like give you some coping strategies. 
to make sure that um, this thing, this beautiful, wonderful world of social media doesn't get to your head, um, doesn't give you a mental disorder, doesn't mess with your emotions. Um, so the first thing for me is we need to, all of us, collectively, create a better online experience. Yeah? And how do we do that? Number one is authenticity. So I'd like to challenge you guys, like be the one person who posts without like a full face of makeup. And I know, I know it's really ironic because I'm sitting here and I've like done my face and I'm, yeah, but um, I'm just once in a while, even for me, I'm challenging myself to just try and be real. Like if you're just, if you're at home and spending your night home, imagine it's cool. Just post and be like, you know, today I'm indoors and be authentic. Don't see kila sa TBT and you know, you know you're in Nairobi, yeah? Like, it's okay also to say, you know what? I'm just in the house, I'm chilling. It's fine. Um, so be the one person who's authentic. Because think about it. If I'm authentic, you're authentic, and everybody will, will drive this um, culture of authenticity. So that's my challenge to you guys. I hope you'll take me up on it, and I hope I'll get to see more authenticity on the gram, especially because that's the one that's more glamorous and stuff. Um, that's where people put their travel and their makeup, made up faces and stuff so i hope i'll drive this culture of authenticity um so the second way you can create a better online experience is by um being tolerant being kind to one another i realized we become so intolerant especially on twitter it's like you must engage in every single argument you know every religious debate every political deb debate and i kind of get it like that's the point of twitter but Imagine some sometimes just sit it out like when you see um, a, a Twitter beef or whatever going on you don't always have to jump in you don't always have to be the one person who's like chiming in how about like if somebody gives their opinion imagine they are absolutely it's fine you are allowed to have your own opinion you don't have to always engage in every battle getting you know Twitter wars everywhere like sometimes just sit it out like you you know your beliefs you know what you believe in you know where you are and if it works for you it's fine you don't have to try and like you know what i mean you don't have to get behind every battle sit some of them out the third way or the third coping strategy i can advise is to be present now i'll tell you guys a quick story there's one time i was sitting with my friend and we were just hanging out just chilling and I just veered off from the conversation and I was on my phone, I was on my phone and I hadn't realized that my friend had stopped talking and she was just looking at me. And she was like, Wundi, I've been, like I stopped talking a while ago and you didn't even notice. And guys, I was so embarrassed, you know. Um, be present, like when you're sitting with somebody and having a conversation, put the phone face down. If it's dinner time, you know, put your phone face down. If you're hanging out with your kids or your nephews, your nieces, put the phone away if you're on a date like let me tell you a friend of mine like told me um he was on a date with a girl and she kept on like you know um it was like selfie selfie and she was like on the gram like for a long time and that was such a turn off like that was the like there was no second date after that so when you go on a date be present talk to this person like just be present you know human experiences are our time here is so limited you don't know like um live alone even like losing someone yeah people could die but also like you you could relocate to a whole other country and then you won't even get to see your friends and you'll be longing for those moments you'll be like i wish i had time to spend with my friends i wish i had time to spend with my family and um so why don't you just live in the moment be present um one more way actually that i can throw in is that you can use your social media for good yeah be the one person who's doing something amazing on social media i've seen so many good campaigns that have um solely run on social media guys starting charity um, charitable organizations charitable projects you know be the one person who does that kind of thing create a better experience online um so those are just some of the few things we discussed i had a beautiful panel um people who are influencers, uh, people who are in marketing and advertising, the things we talked about, um, the questions that were asked in the audience were so real. I wish I could just like transplant that whole um, panel discussion here, but this is my little attempt of uh, creating a summary. Please um, engage me in my comments, uh, my DMs. Let me know 
um, if there are other coping strategies that you would suggest for a better online experience, uh, online experience, or if there is any other way that social media can be a stressor, or just I honestly want any kind of feedback from you guys. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Um, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and to hit that notification bell so that you can get to know when I make more videos. And um, yeah, thank you once again for joining me. I will see you next week. Love and light. Bye.